All right, here's a close-up view of my LM317 current boost transistor. The transistor is an MJ2955. This will, if done right with some proper heat sinking, provide up to 10 to 15 amps, the rating of the transistor. There's the LM317. There's your current adjust as you see there. Here is the actual schematic of the circuit as you've seen in the video. Here's our VCC of 15 volts coming in. It comes in on the emitter of Q1 which is a MJ2955 PNP power transistor. It's rated at 15 amps at 115 watts. We have a current flow from emitter to base called IB. IB is set by this circuit, the LM317 and these, this, very, this potentiometer, and I stuck in an extra 10 ohm resistor just in case I set the uh, potentiometer all the way to zero. I won't have a virtual short from base literally to ground. At any rate, this, nonetheless, what you will find here is the current through the LM17 is set by R set, which is a combination of these two resistors. Your formula is 1.25 divided by R set. All right, these were actual measured voltages. R set was adjusted to 145 ohms. This gave me an I set measured through this meter of 8.62 milliamps. But I set is the same thing as IB, which is also 8.62 milliamps. The spec sheet for the MJ2955 says it has a gain between 5 and 70. That's your HFE or DC gain. As I warned in the video, and I'll warn, to, warn you many, many more times, what you read in the spec sheets and what you come up with on simulation software is not the real world. It turns out that actually under test, and that's after I let it run a while to heat up and the temperature to stabilize, the DC gain turned out to be 116, not 70 quite a bit off. Let's follow our current flow from emitter to collector and that current flow from emitter to collector is controlled by the current flow from emitter to base which is controlled by the LM317 and is set for 8.62 milliamps. 8.62 milliamps times 116 is approximately 1 amp. And that's what I adjusted it for originally when I had an amp meter in series with my load. In this case, the load was a 10 ohm resistor, basically 10 ohm. These are big wire wound resistors, all right? Cold, if you measured the resistance through the original resistor I used, while it's stamped 10 ohms, it was reading more like 12. What happened is the resistor got hot and went on as a circuit as it got hot and got up to its expected operating temperature, the resistance dropped closer to 10 ohms. So I adjusted the amp meter that's in series with the load. I adjusted our, the potentiometer over here to get a one amp current. At a 1 amp current, of course, I was measuring 8.62 milliamps over here. This is a voltmeter tied across it. It was actually at 1 amp about 10.8 volts or something like that. So that tells you that the load resistor is not exactly 10 ohms, but it dropped down closer to what it should have been. It was the voltage come out to a little bit over 10. 
and that's all there is to it. I'm controlling this massive amount of current by a small account amount of current that I control through an LM317. This is far better than using, I could have used a potentiometer in series with the uh, base, but that doesn't work too well. This is a much better way to do it. An LM317 is cheap and easy to use as far as that goes. With our current setup of IC at one amp, the circuit is using about 15 watts of power. I'm going to disregard the few milliwatts used down here. We're using 15 watts of power, of which 15. 5 watts is dissipated in the Q in Q1. 10 watts is dissipated in the load, R load. But they both at 1 amp at 15 volts input. All right, at our present 10 ohm load at a 1 amp current, 10 watts will be dissipated by the load. 5 watts will be dissipated by Q1. Let's change the load to 5 ohms, but leave our current at 1 amp. We've sort of reversed the situation now. 5 ohms times 1 amp is 5 volts. Over here, though, the remaining 10 volts is going to be dropped across Q1. So Q1 is dissipating most of the 15 watts in the circuit. As a suggestion, if you want to say have one amp and leave your load at five ohms or whatever current your circuit is drawing, I would suggest that you drop the uh, VCC if you can to say eight volts. That way with eight volts VCC you will be dropping five watts in the load circuit and only three watts in the Q1 circuit. Let me reiterate once again, and this subject confuses people, you can't just use any value for R load and expect to draw one amp. Let's say we're going to change this to 20 ohms at one amp. That's 20 volts. The only trouble is VCC is 15 volts. The circuit is not working and it won't work. So bear in mind, your load resistance, whatever the current is, when you multiply them together, they have to be a little less than, they can, they have to be a little less than VCC or the circuit will not work. Now, if I wanted to adjust my current for say, uh, a tenth of an amp, a tenth of an amp times 20 ohms is going to be 2 volts, then that's going to work fine. Of course, uh, 2 volts times a tenth of an amp is what? Uh, 200 milliamps. And of course, at 15 volts, you're dropping 13 volts times 200 milliamps over here. You're still drop in most of your voltage. Your voltage will divide according to the load and the current through Q1. So keep in mind your input voltage versus the current out that you want. Our load times the current, its voltage must not exceed VCC. I hope that was some use to you. Thanks for listening.